Hi, I'm Ryan. I'm going to show you what I think is the best way to scrape Zillow for data. If you want to jump ahead, here are the timestamps. First, we're going to set up a Python notebook. We're specifically using notebooks instead of standalone Python scripts. And this will make sense when we get into the detailed portion. Then we're going to make simple page requests to make sure everything is set up right. And then we're going to be able to make detailed requests. And since we're using notebooks, we can make a single request and then keep refining and refining what we're searching for on our side, the client side, instead of the server side. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is go to collab.research.google.com. We're not going to use a notebook on our computers because Collab's a little more accessible to everybody and we don't have to install libraries for it. So when you go there, just click on New Notebook and I'll call this Zillow Scraper. So all the libraries we're going to use. I want to import them now. If you still want to do this on your computer, you can do the pip installs. I wrote them here. So what we're going to do is use request.git to grab the web page. And then when it's local to our computer, really to Colab, then we'll pass it through Beautiful Soup. So we'll end up requesting once, but we'll have a local copy of the data and we'll use Beautiful Soup to parse all of the data out that you want. I'll add code and now I'm going to add one constant. So I want to say pause for five seconds whenever we do anything because um, we don't want to tax their servers and we want to ask or request as few times as possible. I have one more const and that's just the Zillow page I want to go to. I'll open that in a new tab. And the reason I have this tab open is because I'll be able to right click, inspect, and look at the source code so that when we do a simple test on our notebook, we'll ask the server once for a copy, but we'll always be able to reference it over here. Okay, so I'll add code to it again. And now here's our simple request. We're adding headers. We're telling it that we're a normal browser. And please keep this line in. We're saying time.sleep. So whenever you do multiple requests, so we really don't tax the server heavily. Then we'll grab a session. And with that session, we will get the URL that we've just posted in and that we see over here. I'll run up here. I'll bring in the libraries. I'll run the next code block and I'll run the request. Now let's verify. Let's look at the data inside of our response. So I'll add one more code block. Yeah. What I'm going to do is take the response from the request and I'll push it over to Beautiful Soup. So Beautiful Soup passing in response.txt. We'll do an HTML parser with it. I just want to grab the title and the overall title should look like this example. And I just want to split it to get the address. If this all worked, we'll see the address print out. It did. And we're not asking the Zillow server anymore. This is all on our computer. Now what we're going to do is try to get some real data. So to do that, all you have to do is come back over to the actual Zillow page and I'm going to ask it for the square footage. So I'll click this. It's going to show me the span 1,926 feet. So I'll go one level up. I can't just ask for a span. I need to be a little bit more specific. The parent has a very, very intricate class name, two classes named here. I'm going to search for that. So I'll make a new code block, come back here, copy it paste it in and then I'll say dot text so I don't actually want the span tag I want the text within and now if this works we'll see the square footage oh okay in this instance the classes were not unique enough so there's two of them at least uh, with the same name so what I could do is I can change this to a find all and I'll remove the dot text so now I need to loop through them and as I loop through each of these fields I'm going to print the field.txt. So now I found that it's going to say four bed, three bath, and the square footage. And I'll just say that beds, baths, and square footage are the three fields. And I'll print out square footage.txt. And now I have the information that I want. So I hope this helped. Thanks. Bye.